All right, hi everyone. Uh, never been to LSFMM before, uh, so not many of you know me. I'm James Houghton, and I work on live migration at Google. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about HugeCLB high granularity mapping, uh, why we want it, and various things that come with, with doing it the way that has been posted. And I think Mike Kravitz is in the call. Um, you I'm here. Hey, hey Mike. Uh, cool. All right. I'll, I'll get started. So um, I'm going to talk about yeah, the, the problem we attempt to solve with HGM, the current approach that we took, various challenges with that approach, and then the future. And I don't want to talk at you. So if I say anything wrong or if there's anything you want to uh, want to question me about, please just just uh, interrupt me. Um, so uh, one sec. Uh, so uh, we at Google want to use the largest page size we can to back our VMs uh, to maximize VM performance, and we want to guarantee that we get those pages. And so the obvious conclusion is to use huge TLB. Uh, well, we we certainly can't use THPs for this. Um, so we also want to live migrate those VMs. And uh, to do post copy, so we're talking about conventional live migration here, I know <laughs> there are different kinds of been discussed, but to do post copy, so after you've moved execution to the target but not all the memory is present there, you have to be able to catch vCPU accesses to memory that you don't know is, is safe to access. And, and we want to use user fault FD for that. Um, but um, with UCLB, either the entire one gig page or none of the one gig page is mapped. And so you can only, you can only get interrupts for either the entire <laughs> one gig, or you can get page faults for the entire one gig page or uh, none of the one gig page. And so to support, uh, well to do post copy, you have to then fetch one gig at a time. Like one gig is up to date or, or not. And we want to do a, as small a fetch as possible, so 4K ideally. Um, and so, and at the end, we want to be able to collapse all the mappings, all the uh, high granularity mappings that we've made. Um, and so I'll talk about that. And so the, the current approach for HGM is just uh, to implement it as an extension of huge TLB. So there's no THP-like splitting. And so a lot of the walking code becomes, it looks a lot like PT mapped THPs. And so like, uh, an example of, of this kind of difference is like for memory poison, we don't split. So for THPs, they're always split before doing any unmapping, but for huge TLB, we can't do that. Or we don't do that in the current approach. Um, and so huge TLB is already implemented as a bunch of special cases in the MM logic. And so all of those are still here. Uh, we just sort of do more things in those special cases, <laughs> uh, which, yeah, <laughs> so uh, the current implement, the most up-to-date implementation that's been sent out is the V2 on the mailing list. Um, that was sent in February. And that implements support for map shared only, for x86 only, and it implements the first application, the live migration application, uh, which allows user fault FD, the UFFDI will continue to, uh, to work at 4K instead of one gig. Um, memory poison extensions were, uh, submit or were posted last week. Uh, also, only supported map shared, but could support map private. We we want to support like the same memory poison semantics, map shared or map private. Um, to do UFFDIO continue with map private is a little bit more complicated, but it is still possible. But we don't care about it. Like Google doesn't care about it. I don't think I don't think many people care about it. <laughs> um, and the ARM64 implementation has been written, but it hasn't been posted because it's just even more complicated than the x86 stuff. Um, and so I have a whole long list of challenges. This isn't the full list. Um, but so the first one that is the user space API, not exactly a kernel thing, but uh, we have to settle on something that, that will work. And the, what we have now, which isn't necessarily the final thing, is to enable it, we have M and V split, which only enables uh, the, like it, it tells the kernel that user space understands that 4K mappings could be produced from this. Uh, it doesn't force the kernel to use 4K mappings all the time. Um, that doesn't really sound like that sounds a little bit different from what MNV split kind of 
hints at, but that's the idea right now. Maybe it should be M and V enable HGM, but that sounds a little bit too, uh, too not, not generalizable. Um, M and V split could mean something for THPs in the future. Yes, David. So just a question, that means when you when we talk about this um, hardware poison handling, that would mean that only a process that actually set up M advice split would get a 4K mapping on? That's a good question. No, well, we certainly wouldn't want that to be the case, right? We want to do 4K at any time. And so there there is a distinction between advising and like the kernel automatically enabling HGM. So if you advise, then things like UFFDA or continue can work, but the kernel is free to enable it for memory poisoning, and, and so all the kernel bits to handle these high granularity stuff will operate if it's been enabled for any reason, not just uh, advised, and then advised just controls the API, like whether or not user space is allowed to do certain things. So the M-advised split would immediately split it, or would it just enable? No, it just en it allows user space to do a high granularity UFFDI. Okay. That's highly confusing. <laughs> yeah, it is confusing, and so I don't think this is going to be the final API. An another idea, which was the original API, was to make a user fault FD feature just for this, but then it doesn't really extend to something like M V don't need. If if you wanted to allow that at 4K, you would need something more generalizable than user fault FD feature. I personally still prefer the user fault FD feature, but uh, there is a discussion about it. No, <laughs> uh, Peter has a question, but yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, so you, for user fault FD, uh, maybe you could, for something like MIDV don't need, like if you wanted to support that, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, Mike, Mike Kravitz objected. I don't care too much, but but something like a user user space program might assume that they're using huge TLB, and so MV don't need. If they accidentally do MV don't need on 4K, then disallow. That that has come up in the past. I don't know. I think if something like that, maybe we should just. Do. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, but so I, I don't particularly care, but I think Mike probably cares, or Andrew probably cares. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the only, my only objection to the M advised don't need is, is that um, currently we're not um, limiting that today to huge page sizes. So yeah, it's kind of a crapshoot um, what you get out there. What I want to say is just that uh, if we just worry about uh, uh, breaking the ABI, for example, uh, we used to not be able to install a small page, and right now we can do that. Uh, so it's an ABI breakage. I don't think it really matters. I don't know, but if we worry about that and we want we want to avoid a advice split uh, confusing, we can have it uh, like uh, a global, maybe a global uh, flag uh, in like Prague a, or what, whatever. Like a PRCTL or something. So 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 any any uh, application can try to enable it. Maybe or uh, something like uh, PR control. I, I, mean, yeah. no, I don't no idea. I mean, we can make it uh, uh, something else so we can avoid the uh, amount of eyes. Yeah. I don't know. Sure. Uh, again, I don't particularly care. Uh, anything that Mike or Andrew. <laughs> uh, well, you, yeah. you have a file descriptor, right? Because it's huge TLBFS. So you opened um, the file descriptor. You don't there. necessarily have to have one because huge TLB supports anonymous. Yeah, like, well, but, anonymous. but for your application, do you have a file descriptor? Yes. So may maybe an iocto on the file descriptor, put it in the. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we have a file, huge file, and we maybe in this uh, process mapping, we want to have it smaller, and the, the other one, we want to map it hugely, right? I think it's the case. I mean, uh, for hardware poison, but it's not. Also, but this isn't really a property of the file, it's more like a property of the mappings. So, yeah. but as you can see, this is a pretty big challenge, which is why I put it first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but for the sake of time, I think we should move on, but uh, there's a sort of taste as to why user space API is a big challenge. Uh, the next ones are all sort of implementation related. So right now with huge TLB, uh, we just pass around the PTE pointer for the uh, sort of like a one gig PUD 
for example. Uh, and the size information and, like is passed around as the H state, and so it, it's always going to be the same size. And the page table lock is always, you, you can always determine that basically right before you are gonna write to the, the PT or, or read the PT. Um, where with HGM, the size of the PTE could be totally different, like it's variable. The page table lock you're supposed to use can be difficult to determine. So for example, if you have a 4K PTE, uh, you have to know the value of the PMD above you. And depending on where you are, uh, like in the code, uh, that might be difficult to figure out. The way generic MM does this is just by passing around the PMDs everywhere. <laughs> uh, but with huge TLB, that's not how, well with HGM, that's not how it was done. It's, you pass around this generic struct huge TLB PTE, which could be pointing to a 4K PTE, but it doesn't know what the PMD above it is. It was a design choice, uh, but it, it, that was, that's just uh, how it was done. So we, we figure out the PTL, store it in this thing. Yes. Ha have you considered changing it to align to the generic yeah, Walker we can talk approaches? About that. <laughs> we can talk about that. That would be great um, if somebody wanted to take that particular challenge. So, uh, yeah, I'll, we're, we're definitely not gonna go through all these slides, but um, there are only four, I think. But, uh, but yeah, well, let's talk about the sort of potential unification in, in a bit. Um, the other, so the next one is walking the page tables. So, um, because this is implemented separately, um, the architectures have to implement their own huge TLB stepping down, and so, uh, huge TLB provides this alloc PMD, alloc PTE, uh, these functions for the architectures to implement their own walking functions. And it's a lot like their implementations of huge PTE offset and huge PTE alloc, it's just sort of another version of those. And so potentially huge PTE alloc and offset could just be implemented by this one function. That's not done in, in the current series, but could be done. Um, yeah, the next, one, contiguous PTE support. So there are two things I want to call out with that, and I think this applies to generic MM2, is um, the page table lock that you use for, like let's say you have a, a PTE that could be part of a contiguous PTE block. Um, the page table lock you use for all of those PTEs must be the same, because if they're, well, basically you have to be careful not to overwrite. Let's say you want to install a contiguous PTE, you want to make sure not to overwrite some like some PT that's been made present since uh, since you've uh, checked whatever it is you're checking. Um, so like if it's if you use fault FD, you want to check that it's still blank, like still PT none. Uh, right now, like naively, uh, you might only be checking the first PT of the block, assuming that they're always updated together. And so that's why the PTL has to be the same. Um, be it you're, you're dealing with one PT inside the block or the whole block at once. Um, also, the huge TLB architecture API doesn't pass the size of the PT that you're dealing with. It only passes the H state, which doesn't necessarily correspond to the size of the PT, so we have to change that too. We have to pass the size information. And by that I mean we just have to pass the huge TLB, the huge TLB PTE struct. Oh yeah, and the huge TLB PT struct could be more generic. It doesn't necessarily have to be like huge TLB. It doesn't, doesn't have to be in the name. It could just be generic PTE, generic size PTE, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so one of the most difficult things with actually implementing HGM is we have to update everywhere where people assume that HGM doesn't exist. Yes. Yeah, so I, I'm trying to build up the, the whole picture that you're presenting, and the more you are digging deeper into that, the more I think that you're just not, you just don't want to use huge TLB as your backing storage, and uh, essentially you can use the same allocator because for the gigabyte pages you are relying on CMA or uh, boot time pre-allocated pages anyway and essentially just find a different way to access that pool. 
and do not have all that baggage that a huge, huge TLBFS has because you are not going to use a large part of that anyway. Like, uh, it's, it's a backing storage that is fully pre-allocated when you are starting your uh, guest. So you do not use reservations. You, you don't use a well, large part of the complexity of the huge TLBFS. Well, you, do, you do not, sorry, sorry, you do not want to use, uh, uh, or I guess you want that memory to be not uh, swappable, likely. Yeah, well, that, um, which you can achieve by AMLOC. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, so, so essentially I think that it would be much easier and less pain to simply find a different way to access that memory. I think two, two points is we do use reservations in that we still have to guarantee that we get these huge pages. I don't know if reservations are necessarily required for that, but that's sort of an important part of huge TLB in how it gives user space the guarantee that it can provide these huge pages. The other thing is that to do what you're describing, we would have to merge like huge TLB fault, huge TLB no page, huge TLB the cow bits. We'd have to merge that all into the generic MM stuff. Sorry? What, what do you, I'm, I'm, I mean, why? Uh, uh, you, you just have that reliable source of that gigantic uh, page, right? So uh, if you just create a ad hoc driver that can access that CMA pool that allocates that memory or have, or slash like a, a, a kernel parameter uh, gigabyte pages, but call differently so that regular huge DLBFS doesn't ex access that so it cannot steal that from you. Uh, it, it could be done that way. Yeah. Whatever way, uh, it, I don't know if that was Mike, but whatever way you do has to support user fault FD. Uh, and so maybe it could be done like that. Uh, like for example, if you had like dev mem and like you just, you left a, a large, amount of like unmanaged memory um, and passed off through like dev mem, but user vault FD doesn't support dev mem really. Um, so I, I don't know, that, that could work. Um, Mikhail, are you, are you just talking about creating just a, in essence, a simpler version of huge TLBFS just for this purpose? That's what I wanted to ask too, if it's like a slim down huge tail BFS that you're proposing. Uh, uh, I, I actually, uh, I, I, have a, I have a separate question, but let's finish the, like, the, this discussion first. I mean, it sounds like you're, you're saying implement huge tail BFS, just use the generic MM mechanisms instead yeah. of this stuff, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I like that too. I mean, yeah. I, actually, what I'm uh, what I'm saying is that uh, just have a regular MMOP with a different page alloc uh, backend that would well, access that CMA. I don't know pool if that necessarily works because generic MM doesn't support anything higher than PMDs. Well, you have to fix it. Yeah, <laughs> w which could be beneficial for other reasons, but it would be less special, less convoluted, and. Yeah. If I don't, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there was a proposal for one gigabyte transparent huge pages, and that was yeah. snagged. Uh, from, uh, from Z, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted transparent. Peter has. Oh, to okay, so this is not transparent. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. One way you could do that is like if, well, I'll just skip to the this. Uh, so like one way could be like if huge TLBFS implements like the VMOPS fault or huge fault, you could just put all the reservation logic in there and sort of in that way guarantee huge pages. Well, I mean, I think, I think the way the MM is going is we're getting folios now yeah. and folios are gonna be everywhere. And, and if you imagine that you have folios, maybe they're two meg, maybe they're 16 meg, or maybe they're, they're one gig. I, I, I think the generic MM should be able to take a folio and install it in the VMA and install it in the PTEs optimally for all of the sizes 
across all of the architectures, and yeah. that should just be good generic code, right? Yeah. It, it shouldn't be huge TLBFS weird special stuff. I agree with that. Right? So, uh, so if you could get us closer <laughs> to that on your project, yeah. that would be fantastic, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. If, if HTM were done that way, I think it wouldn't be at all controversial. <laughs> uh, so my question is actually, uh, how does uh, uh, HGM works with the Vim map optimization in uh right um, so it depends on how you do map count <laughs> uh, so if you do it the so basically it just depends on if we need to use the sub page page structs for anything and so the only reason as HGM stands today that we would need to use it is potentially for map count and so if we if you use the THP like way of using map count so like if you have a bunch of 4K PTs mapping the page, then you increment the map count for those subpages. But if you have a one gig PUD mapping, you just increment the compound map count, just to simplify things. I've heard a rumor that Matthew's working on this. Yes, and so Matthew, I think, is doing number three, or attempting to do number three. And so that would be, we would get the VMA map optimization back. If we did so, so, so my slides for tomorrow says, up next, meaning of map count, James, yesterday. So um, I was hoping you would cover all that, and then I wouldn't have to talk about it in my. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, basically we have an option because I think right now map count means two things. It means the number of page table entries that map your like 4K page, and the number of VMAs that map your your 4K page. No, is no, it, no it's, is it's, it's ju ju just just the former. Okay. Yeah, and I'm I'm talking about maybe changing it to the latter kind of sort of maybe if you squinted it right. It's a bit. Yeah, it's. There's, there's, there's possibilities for what it could mean. But um, we, 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 you, you, you have a somewhat special case because your, um, your, your, your one gigabyte pages are necessarily aligned to one gigabyte. Yes. Where, whereas for a general THP kind of, you, you have to consider what if it's misaligned? What, what if it covers two page tables? What if, what if it's a one gig and it covers the, the, this little bit of a PTE and then these number of PMDs and then some more PTEs at the end. Okay, what should map count be for that? Okay, so now what if you unmap a little bit in the middle? Is, is that now this? It's hard. VMA it's splitting. Well, uh, yeah, so VMA splitting. What, what do we do? So, so if we're talking about it maybe representing the number of VMAs that have this page mapped at all, then that, that, that's fairly clear that goes up to two. But if, it, if we're talking about the number of page table pages which have a reference to this page, then that becomes hard. Um, I mean, this all becomes hard, right? The, the <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I don't know that we have the obviously correct answer yet, particularly when you consider the number of times you need to acquire the page table lock to answer these, some of these questions. Yeah, uh, and I don't know the correct solution for how map count should be handled. The way that we were thinking, like I guess Mike, Peter, and I were thinking was just uh, use the THP-like way, deal with the fact that we don't have the page struct optimization, and then optimize it later. And so if we went with number three, we can do something special with the fact that huge GLB is always aligned. But we could apply that to aligned THPs as well, maybe. Um, so we only have to deal with a potentially slower case if the THPs just aren't aligned to the base tables. I, I, I mean, one of the reasons why the THP-like map count exists is because of all of these reasons that you could remap part of it, you could like only share part of that with a sub-process, you could partially unmap in a sub-process. Like ideally, you would really only count in your special case that you have like one mapping of that page somewhere and it doesn't matter like if it's mapped by a single PTE, by a single PMD, which parts are unmapped. You know exactly how it's aligned, so you should somehow be able to just say, well, it's it's mapped once, even though like a single 4K page is not mapped in that particular process. That would make your life easier. Once you go into the THP way, it's, it's a little bit like, yeah, like we made some mistakes maybe in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's do the same mistakes with that one. I mean, it's a different, I mean, like more challenges. This is one of the biggest challenges, I think. Um. <laughs> yeah. I think Peter has a question. Uh, uh, not really. It was about uh, the suggestion that Mihao uh, mentioned uh, well, 
on whether we can just reuse the huge page uh, into some other form. I, I think it, uh, there can be some complexity on converting them because I think we want to have firstly need a huge page uh, properties like, uh, as you said, reservations and whatever. Uh, for So we have a VM running or will be running as we saw a huge WFS already. So we want the transparent conversions uh, from sm small mapping to hugely mapping. And I think um, one thing uh, quickly pops in my mind is that we have the page huge set and it, that it's definitely the same page. So the conversion won't be that straightforward. At least we need to clear all the page flags and everything. It seems to be just uh, not uh, feasible or maybe yeah, I don't know. Pretty hard. I don't know if I. So I, what I understood was converting huge TLB pages to and from being huge TLB pages. Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, it seems very hard to do so. Currently, your solution still keeps everything. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if you would need to do that. Um, I, like, I, I think even if you merged like the MM logic, like, you know, ditching huge PT alloc and all that. Uh, you could still have the concept of a huge TLB page. And it could be that like the end game of huge TLB is just that it means that a huge page will be naturally aligned with the page tables. Like that could be what huge TLB means. Um, that would be cool if it ended up like that. <laughs> um, but so I guess to get back to why HTML is implemented like this uh, is because like I, I think, oh, I claim that adding all this support to generic MM will take like a lot of work. And <laughs> uh, no, like I, I agree, but like it, it could be many, many years of work. Whereas with HTM, because it's all contained within huge TLB, um, it sort of, there's an easier path forward we, and we can use huge TLB to demonstrate what generic MM sort of has to do to get up to the, I don't know, maybe that's a stretch. No, no. <laughs> well, yeah, but like something like the introduction of like the huge TLB PT, that kind of thing, like in some, in the in generic MM, I guess it's not necessary that you need something like that. But I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm just worried that uh, you would just have to do the very same amount of work just differently. So you would have to spend twice as much time, maybe triple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could be the case, yeah. But, but if I understand you right, uh, Michael, you're not even saying like do it in the generic MM, you're just, you're just saying like write a, write a device, like you're just your own character device that has one gig mappings and you can, these one gig mappings can be 4K maps sometimes. And then add user root fault FD for it. Is it, it's not really a generic MM, right? It's just a custom device driver? Like all the guff pieces, all the page walk pieces would be generic MM stuff using the generic way of walking pages instead of the huge TLB way of walking page tables because that's that fault is a big pain. And we know that we need these things coming forward. Like CXL is probably going to need big pages and DAX needed huge pages and it kind of did some weird stuff to get them or we gave up on it, right? So, like, it, it there's. <laughs> But, but I mean, but that's the point. Like we we plumbed GUP for PUD mappings for for DAX, so we we, we have that. But you put the mappings in in the wrong way, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it, it, aside from that, it, but it, but but it is it, it it shows that you can you can you can force that kind of crap into the kernel, yeah. But um, <laughs> but in terms of like yeah, you know, like having having a like struct page support for a device mapped. Uh, a, a device owned physical address range like we we that's what device x is i mean but it's, but I, I, mean, I, I wouldn't use a device x i would just make another another thing that's well, another character device right? he, yeah. he has, he has a character device i mean what he wants is a character device that has a folio the folio happens to be 1 gig and when he takes a fault he wants to return a 1 gig folio to the generic mm and the generic mm optimally installs it in the ptes right that's what we all want for all over the place yeah um, so that would be great if you, you, you can get there. And I mean, that sounds like this, like making MM support PUDs, like installing PUD mappings and stuff like that, and yeah. keeping, like basically, huge TLB has its own cow logic, has a bunch of its own logic that would have to be merged in with generic MM. But we have we have put cow yeah. 
We have, we have we have this. Like I don't I don't think it's as big as you think it is. That might be true. Uh, I know that like UF50IO Continue, for example, only supports adding PTEs. That would have to change um, for generic MN. Um, and well, I, yeah, maybe it's maybe it's time to reevaluate. See if it is simpler to actually do the the correct thing and uh, extend generic MN. Yeah, each DLB has such a large historical baggage that you would have to deal with, or you would just have to prohibit that, like uh, page table sharing. That well, would just I, th bring I think we would need to, to have that as well. Like I know Mike has users who, who do care deeply about PMD sharing. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> but then you have to deal with uh, some portion of them might not like to be split, and so, well, yeah, so I think the, the people who care about PMD sharing don't care at all about HGM. Um, but if we're going to merge HTLB with generic MM, generic MM has to support PMD sharing. Yeah, I mean, right now, right now when you do any user fault FD operation, or, or should I say almost any user fault, FF, user fault FD operation, you disable PMD sharing. Um, Peter can correct me if I'm wrong, but he added that code. I'm pretty sure, yeah, missing is fine. Minor, minor is the problem. Anyway, but I think the point is that, like, QCLB supports contiguous PTEs and supports, yeah, well, I mean, everything except, like, swap and all that. <laughs> um, and so QCLB and generic MM just support different things. And so we would need something that supports both. Uh, you have a pretty narrow use case. You just need generic MM to support what you want, right? Like, you you don't need the stuff you talk about well, in UGLBFS, so you don't need to mess with it. I think that's Michael's point is... Uh, okay, you know, yeah, I, I understand. Right. Uh, yeah, you, you can live without uh, uh, page splitting, uh, without page reclaim, without copy on write, uh, without many of other things that are really making THP very complex and huge DLB EFS uh, pretty complex in a different way. So uh, it's just about plumbing, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just, yeah, I mean, uh, just last words. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> would you like to conclude or uh, because we are... Yeah, I don't have anything to to say at the end, but thank you all for spending time uh, thinking about this and, uh, well, helping me and, and Mike come up with something that could actually be merged in the future. Uh, yeah.